What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. Been a little bit MIA, it's early in the morning. I've been super busy with work coming up now and basically, because of that, yeah. So you guys saw my little sneak peek video of like solenoids, but like these past couple of days, maybe the past week or two, um, it's been insane. I'm gonna flip the camera around because you guys don't like selfie mode, but super proud right now of the virtual pinball cabinet. Just a quick overview, 50 inch play field, 32 inch back glass, 22 inch DMD, totally handmade, custom made. I cut the wood and everything. I'm proud of this one. Obviously, if you guys have not yet followed me on Instagram at Vic underscore VP, you guys probably saw um, the stories as far as me actually building it. Towards the end of this, I'll actually sit down and I'll do like a uh, OBS capture and I'll show you all the parts and everything. But yesterday, I got the graphics in. Graphics from Custom Arcade Graphics. Um, no hookup. He gave me a little bit of a hookup, basically free shipping. I made all of the artwork amazing stuff great communication he's the only guy that really answered the email right away and within about two weeks he printed it shipped it and it took me about maybe three hours to apply it but just want to give you guys a quick look at it this is in my basement i literally sized it perfectly you could even see my custom topper we got bart and homer yes the bags will come off it's just to protect them from dust um let me know if you guys want a whole tutorial i do plan to do like a tutorial on how to get all this going yes it is a wires uh what is it a bird's nest of wires um i tried to go as clean as possible but the way i have this kind of set up is that it is able to be removed um without any issue and also the pc so i'll do a lot of stuff shout out to major frenchie terry red um, they're really the only two guys, like Major Frenchie is the one that really kind of shows you how to do solenoids and all the toys. Tyra Red talks about the software, so I'll probably dab into it as far as how I did my solenoids. But again, just want to give you guys a quick update on it. I'm so happy with it. So I'll start with like the biggest thing, which was the graphics. Uh, again, all custom graphics by me. Got a couple of HD photos online and everything so i got everything set here we got the plunger i got a launch ball here and then i do have four buttons that will be going here no coin door um i'm not a fan of the coin door i don't see a point of it i guess i get that it gives you the realistic look but for me on the cost i didn't really want to spend on the coin door so it is doable that's why i have my custom virtual pinball party um logo i made it's doable to put it here, so it's not really gonna to interfere too much. That's why I made it like that. Um, again, if you do see a side-by-side -side of the real Simpsons Pinball Party, I did try to replicate it as much as possible. I'll do a separate video as far as um, the artwork on it, but I mean, I'll flash it real quick, what it would look like side-by-side. -side. This is all 100% custom. I got new background file. Lisa's different, Marge is different. I even snuck in Maggie here. And basically, again, this right here was a PNG of the actual wheel artwork um, that you would find in like Hyperspin. And then I added the virtual to it. Also put in the Game Case Arcade's Vic VP logo, obviously. Back box is awesome. I wasn't a fan of the original back box. Um, it's got basically the dog and the cat, Snowball and Santa's Little Helper, like their tails on the left and then their faces here. I didn't like it. I wanted to do my own little thing. So we got Homer's hand and the iconic choking of Bart. Left side here for the boys, we got Bart and Homer. Same thing, tried to replicate it. I couldn't really find a good picture of Bart, so I found the slingshot. I thought it was pretty cool. And then again, same thing, logo, virtual pinball party. And then on this side here, I did Itchy and Scratchy. So pretty cool. Awesome stuff, and again, custom arcade graphics. Sending me out, 3M, this stuff was great. I told him I need the type of vinyl that won't stretch, because when I apply graphics, I pull to make sure there's no bubbles. Um, basically, somebody I used in the past, I pulled it and it actually stretched the actual vinyl. So he was awesome, really cool guy. 
this does have the gloss to it i'm drawing a blank as to word the wording on it but it does have the shine finish um i was a little worried that it might be too shiny but you actually don't see the shine so i'm pretty happy with it you could do a matte finish which i was gonna do that but i said you know what i haven't done arcade graphics yet with like the gloss and i like how this came out i mean you could definitely see it as far as in the light but on the side again though in my room like that's the one that's above there's no real lighting right directly hitting it um but all in all really awesome stuff uh going into detail as far as toys we got 10 solenoids that's like the max you could do on virtual pinball i got 10 solenoids i have a bunch of strobes and flashes underneath and again i'll make a video as far as like parts because somebody did request it on instagram for parts we got strobes we got flashers you got the beacons i have my own topper here this is actually a pretty cool thing i wanted it to be a surprise but i'll show you uh secretly those are piggy banks and i do have white leds underneath them so they're always going to be lit up you got the beacons and we also have another pair of flashers here I'm doing my flashers a little bit differently. I'll go into it when we get into that part, but again, it's just a little overview. Super happy with it. Real pinball legs, real pinball plunger. Um, that stuff supplied by Pinball Life. Not supplied, I bought it from them. Um, you know, no discounts on this. Um, but again, just to kind of give you an idea. Awesome stuff, really cheap. Uh, pinball legs, the plunger, the launch button, and the... Um, buttons the leaf buttons i think i paid all together about 140 bucks the leaf buttons though i messed up um i actually went a different route i kept the traditional arcade button um here i'll show you so these are the ones i bought from pinball life and these i guess are real pinball flipper buttons um i never dealt with like this but as far as like three quarter inch i would have had to make basically a hole that was just gonna you know finish this trim and uh on a test piece of wood i i i butchered it so i wound up not using these i have um somewhere i bought these special leaf switches for these regular buttons so again it is the same size button it's just i have so many of these arcade buttons so we're using that up top we got magna saves so i got those on regular micro switches but the actual flipper buttons will be on leaf switches. So check that out. We got yellow and white. I wanted to follow that. So now some real quick details as far as the actual cabinet. I'm super proud of this. I'm not a woodworker, but I totally cut this myself. A uh, circle saw, you got straight edge, and that was really all I needed in a drill. Um, again, it wasn't perfect. It's not 100% clean cut. Um, you might be looking at this like, what the hell? It's a little jank, but in all honesty, this right here is rock solid. Like, it's not going nowhere. And I'm super proud of it because I don't really do woodworking and I've wanted to go into woodworking as far as arcade cabinets. If you do see like the pictures of like when I was making it, um, like this here, this edge right here was my first edge cut. It wasn't perfectly straight, um, meaning that there's a couple of grooves. Maybe you can see that like little one. But there's gonna be a um, angle going over this. So I wasn't worried about this at all. Um, same thing with T molding cuts. I had the router bit, I cut T molding. So up here, I basically just put white T molding cause I had it from Eugene's build and I always have T molding lying around. This was a little tough. Um, it does, it right here, just one little imperfection right here where it actually kind of went off a little bit and the corner right here. It's just the right side. You could literally see like the little indent, but for a first timer to cut with the T molding bit, the router bit, I think I did a pretty damn good job. I was very surprised with it. And on my edges here, these are straight edges. So right angles. So not too bad. T molding always is difficult to get the perfect right angle going. Um, but Again, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm super proud of it. And uh, there you guys have it. That is literally my pinball cabinet. 
Uh, as far as the PC, well, this is like my test bench area here. So you can see I have the 32 inch um, ViewSonic. I got my 22 inch Spectre DMD. And then we have the 50 inch Samsung that's going in. This is the PC here. I have it on its own MDF board. So it is removable from the pinball cabinet. Um, I'll do a, a price breakdown on the PC. I tried to go cheapest as possible, but 4K. We are doing 4K on this. So this is the RTX 2060. I didn't go cheap with the graphics card because I didn't want stutter. There are some pinball fanatics that say you could get away with the 1660. I went just to be safe with the 2060. Software on pinball is getting more advanced and I'll show you guys later on. I'd rather be safe and get that. Um, all in all, the 2060, we got 16 gigs of RAM. I got a 500 gigabyte M.2 SSD and the 430 watt power supply. You're looking at about 750 to 780 in PC parts alone. Again, that is a little bit of an update as far as the pinball cabinet. Uh, got a lot of stuff. I just got my Dayton audio. Um, a lot of people kept hyping up the surround sound feedback. It's basically four exciter speakers in the corners. I bought them. Let's try them out. Again, my first ever pinball cabinet. I'm going all out with this. This is going to be my personal one. And again, just giving you guys a little bit of an update. Again, big shout out to Custom Arcade Graphics. Um, first time I ever applied graphic artwork uh, besides doing like regular like carbon fiber stuff on control panels. This was really cool. The guy was great. Um, definitely want to do 300 DPI. The original file I sent them was low quality. I had a, I sent them an 80 DPI. He requested 300. We got that all situated. So this is like awesome. Super high def, the color on it. I love everything about it. Um, basically, when I did make the artwork, I knew the size of the wood, and then I added two inches to each side. This way I had enough slack to either cut and pull. So as you can see here on the inside, I always kind of pull in and drop. This way it really keeps it from ever coming off. Um, so I got that, you could even see it here. I had a lot on the on the side panels here. I did a lot of excess uh, extra inches. I think I did about four inches extra um, only because I was very worried about where the logo would land. Um, again, my first time ever doing it. So it, it literally worked out perfectly. That's why I have so much excess up here, but excess is good. It's better to have more than to have none and, and be short. So again, these edges here are gonna be covered by an actual L angle. So no need to worry with that. My only little thing, and it's not major. The only thing was the back box for itchy and scratchy. Um, even somebody in the Facebook group was like, oh man, I wish the ax wasn't cut. Um, it was either have the ax full, but then you're going to lose like part of his face. I didn't want to deal with that. So I probably should have went a little bit smaller with itchy and scratchy. Um, really, I guess itchy because he was the bigger one. Scratchy's good. He came out perfectly right on the edge. Again, that was like my only one little thing. I should have put him a little bit smaller, but all in all, it looks great. Even Bart in the corner, it looks awesome. We got shadow effect going on. Again, I, all custom artwork. We'll do a whole thing about artwork on the Photoshop file, but super proud of this one.